He was the figurehead. He was number eight. Solid, consistent, steady Troy. A no-nonsense, no-BS guy. Let's just go out and play football and win. Long ago, the land of Troy was the perfect place to grow up. Sunny Southern California days were filled with fun and games. And young Troy grew sturdy and strong, a lot like his dad, a stubborn, hard-working farmer. Growing up with my father, you were either going to be tough or you weren't going to make it. You know, you just weren't going to survive in the Aikman house. And so uh, there was a part of me, I think, that always wanted to, to show him that I was as tough as he was or that I could handle as much punishment as anybody. And, but he uh, wasn't a football fan, was he? Right? Yeah, he was. He in was? fact, I wasn't going to play football in eighth grade when my family moved from California to Oklahoma. Uh, and I think he sensed that I wasn't going to play. And he came home one night and uh, said, hey, they're signing up uh, guys for eighth grade football down at the stadium, and I just wanted to see if you were going to play. And I think he knew that I couldn't tell him I wasn't going to play football, and that's why he asked. And so I went and signed up and played, and the things that I think made me what I was as a player, the toughness, the discipline, the work ethic, all of those things were instilled in me as a child growing up with my father, and they were demanded of me. As quarterback, Troy was larger than his linemen, but the Henrietta Hens were horrible. A lost season at Oklahoma followed. Then he transferred to UCLA and became the number one pick in the NFL draft. His rookie season was a nightmare. He was 0-11 as a starter. The Cowboys were beaten up, but Kenneth Aikman's boy never quit. My first year there in 1990, we played the Eagles at home. They sacked Troy 11 times. Blasted from behind. Oh, merciful heavens. Setting up, but he sacked again. They've got him. It wasn't just you know, pulling the guy down. It was Jerome, and it was Reggie, and it was Seth, and it was Clyde, and it was one right after another, and they were big time hits. They feel like a point judge. Seven, eight, nine, and out. And we lost 24 nothing. It wasn't that close. But every time he got up and walked back to the huddle, the guys on the field and the people on the bench on both sides knew that this guy was tough. You know, a lot of people would look at you and look at your career and say, well, geez, here's a guy that came in, was a leader, confident right from the start. But was there ever a point when you, when you said, geez, I don't know whether I'm going to cut it here? I never went through a period of saying, boy, I just don't think I can play at this level. You know, I went through periods of saying, I just don't know how long it's going to take before I can play at the level that I know I'm capable of. I thought it could take me you know, six years before I ever even got comfortable with things, but I never doubted that at some point it would happen. It's a big night, guys. Let's start fast and let's compete. 60 minutes. Let's go win on three. One, two, three, win! Aikman became the ultimate ringmaster, bombing away to the playmaker Michael Irvin loosening up defenses for the game-breaker Emmett Smith. It's a supersonic laser blast from Aikman to Irvin for a touchdown. With Captain Comeback himself on hand, Dallas's new star shined bright in the NFC Championship game, making all the plays, especially in crunch time. Aikman and his young Cowboys were going to the big show. From 1 and 15 in 89 to the Super Bowl, four years. That's unbelievable. Can you remember your feelings in that first Super Bowl? I couldn't get my, my breathing down to normal, and we went in the huddle, and I could hardly call the plays. I was having a hard time catching my breath, and the first pass that I threw was a third down pass to Michael, and he was on a little simple corner route. I threw it about 20 yards over his head, and I'm, I was thinking, holy cow, this is going to be, I mean, I, I, I got to get out of this somehow, and, and fortunately, the game kind of slowed down. And Aikman got hot, completing 22 of 30, with four touchdown passes in one of the finest Super Bowl performances ever. Troy Aikman's the MVP. Dallas, your Cowboys are the champions. Four years earlier, we were the worst team in football. Four years later, we're winning the world championship and we're on top of the world in pro football. It was a great time for all of us. 
despite winning six division titles, three Super Bowls, and the most games in a single decade by any quarterback ever, there were whispers. Where was the free spirit, reckless abandon of Steve Young? Dan Marino's gaudy stats and records, or the heroics and comeback magic of John Elway? Some said that anyone could have quarterbacked that team, and Dallas won because of the system, the big line, or Irvin and Smith. In truth, it indeed was Aikman who was the taken for granted, very heart of the team. He's the most accurate thrower I think has ever played the position. When he was right, when he was hot, he was as good as I've ever seen. He was the catalyst, he was the leader, no question about it. When you look at what happened to him over the years and how many times he really got leveled, he was a guy who played game after game in as much pain as any quarterback of his day. I think there was fire. I think there was fire in his eyes or fire in his heart. He wanted to win games and he knew what he had to do to win games. Hey guys, that's an embarrassment out there! That's a damn embarrassment! We can't block anybody up the now we're hugging the ball early! Junior League! In the end, even Aikman's competitive fire wasn't enough, as concussions, four head coaches, age, and free agency all took its toll. We're not as good as we used to be to be, you know, continually overcome that. You know, we can't have negative plays. What happened, you know, towards the end of my career was it becomes a very tormented, uh, you know, 16, 17 weeks when you expect so much that you don't get enough satisfaction from the wins to, to take the place of the, the defeats. Looking at, at your retirement, we were looking at that one like for an hour or so. <laughs> yeah. were, you, were you surprised at, at the way you reacted to that? I, I think it was just the realization that it was, that it was coming to an end. And you, you watch it and you think that your time will never come. And uh, you know, my time's come. The Cowboys is a very special organization, but it's not special because they got a star on the helmet. It was special for me because of the people behind the helmets. And when you know that that's ending, that's pretty emotional. Today I announced my retirement from the National Football League and the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, it was 12 of the best years of my life. Looking back in your whole career, what's the most vivid memory you have about football? You know, it isn't a particular play. Uh, it wasn't when I was younger. It was the first Super Bowl. High formation this time. I threw a touchdown pass to Alvin Harper to pretty much seal the game. We knew we were going to win the game at that point. I had never raised the number. I'd never done this after at any point in my career. It's the only time in my career that I ever gave the number one signal when I was running down to congratulate Alvin. Then I came over to the sidelines. The look on everybody's faces, the celebration, to me is, is really what captures my imagination whenever I think of my entire athletic career because to me it defines what my whole career was about and it defines what, what hopefully I represented as a player in that it was always about the team being successful and that picture captures a team that was successful.